Tesla started with gigacastings. It started making structural battery packs using gigacastings and also making massive body parts using gigacastings as well. This reduced the need for hundreds of parts for welds, stamping, all kinds of different work, and it reduced the amount of cost and complexity going into a car. Plus it made them lighter and more structurally rigid. Therefore, Chinese competitors or Chinese automakers said, wow, that's a great idea. Companies like BYD pretty quickly started doing the same thing. Now, Chinese scientists have engineered supersized magnesium alloy auto parts that could see the development of even cheaper and even lighter cars. The two giant parts consisting of a car body and a battery box cover were derived from a single mold in one casting. Tesla was currently at around three pieces for the car. While these scientists and engineers in China are saying they've made it into a single part. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Australia. This report is from the South China Morning Post, and it was just published a few days ago. Magnesium alloys are about 30% lighter than mainstream aluminium alloys and 70% lighter than steel. Lighter auto parts can lead to an increase in car range and effectively alleviate range anxiety for electric vehicles, said Yang Bin, a professor with the Research Center in an interview with the Chinese news outlet on Monday. But I should mention the fact I rode bicycles with magnesium rims before. They seem to be uh, particularly susceptible to deformation. I, I, in other words, I had bicycles with carbon rims and aluminium rims, never really had any issues with them. But magnesium doesn't seem quite as strong when it comes to impact strength. So it could potentially be an issue in a crash. However, more than 70% of the world's magnesium resources are in China. And magnesium is incredibly lightweight. A car built from magnesium could, in, could potentially be hundreds and hundreds of pounds lighter than today's steel-bodied cars. The scientists used high-pressure casting to create the two parts using a technology similar to Tesla's gigacasting process. This high-pressure megacasting leads to smoother surfaces, stable dimensions, and the ability to mold in a single casting, and it's been responsible for speeding up Tesla's production in its Shanghai and Berlin factories, seeing the production cycle shortened from one to two hours to three to five minutes. That's a huge difference because it also means that less robots and less people are needed to make the car, meaning less costs. And that's probably one of the reasons why Tesla's are able to reduce the price of its EVs by so much over the past 12 months. Fewer parts equals lower cost. Faster speeds equal lower cost as well. And this also means that if you reduce the weight, the structural weight of a car, you can also reduce the battery weight or the battery size to still get a similar range, meaning the costs overall are greatly reduced. Fuel parts, lower costs, and a simplified production line have contributed to Tesla's industry leading profitability. I think that's pretty pretty well known now, right? The weight of the rear body was reduced by 30%, and manufacturing costs could be reduced by 40%, said Reuters in a report on this new gig casting in China. Now, if it is true that the manufacturing cost could be reduced by 40% with these new Chinese gigacasting techniques, there is just nothing that legacy automakers can do other than say, well, okay, please build our cars for us or give us this technology or I don't know. But basically, if you can't beat them, join them. What else can you do? If it's true that it reduces the price by that much, you just could not possibly compete with that. Yang further noted that replacing commonly used aluminum alloys with magnesium alloy could lead to many benefits when used with high pressure casting. He explained that magnesium is lightweight and abundant and magnesium alloys can actually absorb vibrations and dissipate energy in a way that aluminum alloys 
are not able to. The researchers further noted that they had overcome any challenges to creating large magnesium alloy castings through structural design, raw material purification, casting process optimization, and other means, like possibly adding other metals into the molds. Despite magnesium alloy's slightly higher material cost compared to aluminium, the faster production speed and ability to produce more parts from the same amount of material makes the overall cost per part comparable, said the researchers. Car makers everywhere are switching to more advanced casting processes for car bodies. Originally, they sort of mocked and derided Tesla for their uh, toy car idea, because Elon Musk actually got the idea to do this from a toy car. But now, Mercedes, Volvo, Volkswagen, BYD, and Toyota have all announced plans to use mega casting. And Chinese car makers, including Neo and Xpeng, are doing the same. Experts now say that the trial casting could promote the large scale use of magnesium alloys in large complex structures. It holds strategic significance for the lightweight construction of cars, the Chongqing Daily said in a report according to SCMP. Now, theoretically, I think making a car in potentially basically two parts out of magnesium alloys, it really could possibly reduce a car by 400 plus pounds. That's a huge difference. The other improvement we're seeing is we're seeing lighter battery packs. If you combine those technologies together, the future of electric cars is more range for less price. The development of supersized aluminium or magnesium auto parts has the potential to significantly impact the auto market, particularly in the area of cost, weight reduction, and range improvement for electric vehicles. Number one, cost reduction. The use of magnesium alloys in auto parts can lead to lower production costs, fuel parts, and a simplified production line. Of course, Tesla has demonstrated this exact concept. The ability to produce more parts from the same amount of material helps make the overall cost per car. The ability to produce more parts from the same amount of material helps make the cost per part comparable to aluminium, but with the advantage of lighter weight. Now I spoke about weight reduction, but how does this affect the vehicle? Well, magnesium alloys are significantly lighter than mainstream aluminium alloy and steel. By incorporating magnesium alloy parts in cars, automakers can achieve weight reduction leading to benefits such as increased car range for EVs. Lighter vehicles can also improve overall fuel efficiency versus internal combustion engine vehicles. Range improvements for EVs are coming with this technology. The lighter weight of magnesium alloy auto parts can alleviate range anxiety commonly associated with EVs. Now, I don't think it's really legit, to be honest, because I think in the real world, when you drive an EV, it's very rare to experience this, but this could possibly help in the push towards longer range EVs for the same prices. By the way, these kinds of new technologies, while they sound a little bit scary because obviously it's Chinese companies that have invented this and they're going to use them, almost certainly they will be using them in the future, meaning that Chinese EVs will probably have an advantage in terms of weight, it still does mean one thing. The, the truth is that we buy Chinese products already. We buy Chinese cars already, a lot of us do. This would just mean the price will come down even more and the product would be improved. And it also could mean that companies in the West may copy these kinds of techniques, or might not. Unfortunately, some of the legacy automakers are very slow to adapt and change. And that could simply lead to them going bankrupt. Why do I say that? Well, look at a company like Nissan. Their debt has already been downgraded to junk. And they're being disrupted in a very big way in their largest car market in the world, which is actually China. If they lose that market, what happens to them? Well, similar things apply to most legacy automakers. The future for many of them could end in peril. I think it will. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.